Porsche has just unveiled the facelifted or refreshed 2025 Porsche Taycan. And honestly, I'm not so sure about this exterior. I can let you know exactly why. However, the interior, when I saw that, I almost fell off my chair because I was so happy to see one little detail that they implemented in the interior. I'm of course, gonna show that in Photoshop compared to the old one as well. Before we jump into Photoshop here, let's have a look at this article from Car and Drive and let's see what's going on here. Uh, so 2025 Porsche Taycan skyrockets in price, adds range and charging speeds. The updated Taycan base price jumps $8,845 compared to last year with the entry model now starting at over hundred grand. The old one started at $92,000. And then we have the Sporty GTS sedan and the GTS Sport Turismo wagon are not in the lineup for you as at least right now and then the prices for the turbo versions you have the turbo starting at $175,000 and then you have the turbo asset $210,000 or $211,000 you still have some sort of wagon versions with the cross turismo which starts at $113,000 and here you also have the price for the uh, turbo s cross turismo now you also have this new push to pass function which is included in the sport chrono package they offer a 10 second boost of up to 70 kilowatts. I'm not sure if that is necessary in a uh, 938 horsepower EV, but you get that anyway. Porsche also sheds some weight from the battery while increasing capacity. You now have a 313 mile range, and this is something the car and driver actually tested themselves. Uh, so it's it's the true range here with the car showing an 8% state of charge. That allowed us to charge our test car from eight to 80% in just uh, under 17 minutes, which is not that bad. Delivery for 2025 Taycan starts uh, this summer and there is also an unnamed winged probably a you know top of the range performance Taycan that's been seen uh, testing at Nürburgring probably coming later this year as well so let's jump into Photoshop here and let's have a look at what's going on with the Taycan I'm gonna let you know exactly why I actually prefer the uh, previous or the pre facelift Taycan to the new one because look at this look how beautiful this integration is I actually love this cut that we have right here in, in the in the fender housing the headlight it's just a beautiful design and it kind of creates a nice line where everything then continues into the lower section here as well with this pretty large headlight I would say and the uh, signature lighting with the four LEDs like this for Porsche but look what they did in the in the new one here this is this got a lot more static to me and it doesn't it doesn't feel as organic or as fluid because I don't think that this integration down here of this new bumper and this intake that we have on the side this is nowhere near as beautiful as the pre facelift up here which has some cool styling to it it makes it very unique to have this C shape going around the fender and also this big bulge that that's being cut which being the front muscle over the front axle looking fantastic it still has that type of feel but you can see that the top part also feels like this is all rounded here it's a round smooth curvature but now it's almost like it's, it's a shelf on top here before it dips down a little further down here you see the corner here is more defined now and I honestly it looks good still but it still it doesn't look as exotic as the pre facelift in my opinion the lower section also got a new treatment uh, which I'm not opposed to because this looks pretty good uh, even though I, I do probably still prefer the old one as well here because these wings look more integrated and has a nice flow to it here with the body color that we have on the new one it feels very abrupt to just cut them off like this I would much rather have them be they could be body color but have it extend to something like this in the middle and have a connection with it the wheels also, uh, you know, I'm not sure, these are probably the, the smallest wheels you can get for the Taycan, but I 100% in this case, for the pictures we have here, 100% prefer the top wheels as well. So that is the front view and why I prefer it. I just think it looks more organic and more uh, unique and exotic in the old one. Now looking at the side view here, there's not a lot of changes to the side view. We do have this line that we have, the shoulder line, cutting in on the old Taycan right here. Doesn't really have any sort of connection to the um, charging port, but now it looks like they added maybe some lights here. I'm not entirely sure what this is that goes into the charging port, but we still have, of course, the same uh, shoulder line. And this line has a clear connection to the side, beautifully done, and then also it has a connection to the rear end. But this is also something that we had 
in the old version up here. And looking here at the front view, this is another reason why I prefer the old one because have a look at the angle of where the graphic sits within the front end. We have a nice housing for it right here. So the same beautiful line that we have in the front view is visible in the side view here, but it's it becomes a lot more static. Look, have a look at how sharp this corner is up here and it doesn't look harmonious at all. It has a huge clash with the roundness that we have over the headlight and I'm not sure why Porsche decided to go this route to add a, huge, a very sharp corner here when there is essentially no other sharp corners at all on this design but I do love these proportions one of the best looking uh, you know performance EVs out there clearly Porsche we still have the same shoulder line obviously in this case in the new one and I also love that we have this chamfer underneath the tail lights the tail end hasn't really changed much but here you can also see the larger dimension wheels is definitely something I would go with for my Taycan now looking at the rear end real quick because there's really not a lot of changes that I can see for both of these cars. We still have this nice, beautiful chamfer at the lower section housing the, the taillight graphic, looking very Porsche-ish. And with the diffuser down here, it doesn't seem like it's changed at all either. On the, on the new one, we still have these diffuser pieces down here that are only blacked out, so you can barely see them down here at the bottom. And of course, this key line is uh, intact in both. We have this line right here, then continuing into the lower lower side of the Porsche Taycan, creating one line that, as I've said so many times before, one line at the bottom that wraps around the entire car. Now, the biggest uh, update that I think this Taycan got was in the interior. So you might think that this is actually switched, that the old one is at the bottom and the new one is at the top, but that's not the case. And look what Porsche did here. Uh, they actually added a housing for the gauge cluster and that makes me so happy it just made my day to see this i i'm not sure but i have this feeling that maybe manufacturers are starting to realize that maybe not all changes that we've seen the past five years are great changes for example physical buttons uh removed those uh, in favor of all pixel buttons and stuff like that and also having a housing for the gauge cluster this just looks so much better than just have a, a digital dash like this just sitting naked up here. And I'm really glad to see the Porsche implemented. Some went back a step, but in reality, they actually went forward. Other than that, I don't really see any changes for the interior. It looks like everything else is exactly the same. The infotainment screen is still sits a little bit offset from the center line, which has always been a little bit annoying to me when I look at it. You see here we have these lines, the center line of the dash, and then the uh, infotainment screen sits way further this way. We have this screen here, optional screen for the passenger side as well. So overall, not sure what portion, what they were really thinking creating this new front end because to me it definitely takes away a lot of the personality of the Taycan with this cut that we have beautiful that also was available in the in the first concept so the exterior upgrade not a huge fan but when it comes to the interior if I could have this new interior with the old body style with just this cap on top of the gauge cluster I would be very happy